Nerd Bourbon Film and TV Addiction Hotline. Is everything okay? Hi, thank, thank you so much for answering. It's, it's been such a long time since I've rewatched one of my favorite movies or TV shows, but today I relapsed. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Nerd Bourbon Relapse, the podcast series where we revisit the series that we love. Todd, how are you doing? It's been 84 years. <laughs> it's been so long. <laughs> it's been a long time coming, but finally, we are rejoined by my now <laughs> my now wife. We've been married. Not since the last episode. Yes, we have. No, the last time we recorded an episode of this, I don't believe we were married yet. Is that right? I can, I can fact check that. <laughs> I don't think we were married yet. This this series has been a long, long series in the making. Hopefully we'll finish it up soon. But here here's what's happening. We are all grown people. <laughs> grown folk <laughs> with um jobs and lives of our own. And I mean we don't really have a lot of time to watch movies. We usually spend it playing D and D or just or playing something. D and D. We don't have a lot of time just to watch well, we uh, we finally we finally have the lovely Anastasia Sturgill back here in the the Nerd Bourbon studio with us, Nerd Bourbon Tower South. We uh, we finally got her back, and the reason why is because we we are finally wrapping up our relapse through the original trilogy of Star Wars, finishing off with Episode Six, Return of the Jedi. Really your first time viewing these movies, correct? <laughs> Are you saying, is that a glasses joke? No. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, no, it wasn't. Because cool. I just got glasses. I couldn't view them properly. She just got glasses for the first time. So now yeah. you're looking on them with your own eyes. <laughs> and stop. Uh, yeah, I believe. Well, I don't remember. If I've watched them before, I have. I don't remember anything about so them. Essentially, your first time viewing I it. I saw the third one in theaters Mm -hmm. and i barely i remember lava and that was like (laughs) i love to say that Remember the one with the lava barely (laughs) (laughs) and of like obviously like rogue one and and stuff like that but like the new ones solo so but um how did this one hold up for you this one was fucking good this one's my favorite so far is it really yeah that's good to know i was surprised by that i didn't know a lot of people I, I, I go back and forth between this one and Return or, and uh, Empire Strikes Back as my favorite one. But, yeah, this one definitely, oh, I, I feel uh, like you got the most way, out of it. By the way, she was your wife. She was? Uh, so yeah, uh-huh. it's uh, December yeah. 28th, 2018. So fuck off. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I stand corrected. Um, yeah, so, but Return of the Jedi, I, I mean, I love the movie. It, it holds up really well. Todd, how'd you feel like it held up? <sighs> I don't like some of the changes from the special edition. Well, of course. <laughs> this is a long storied thing. You you want to talk about specifically? <laughs> I don't like the eyes on the Ewoks. Oh, I like that. <laughs> they bothered the, the shit. They bothered the shit the, out of me. <laughs> and like that's fair because you're used to them being just black soulless. But I like that they had like it reminded me of my dog, or like my cat. How her his pupils change. Yeah. And that's like you could see that in Ewoks too. So you could see like when they were excited and stuff. I thought it gave them more personality. So I liked it. Can we just talk for a second about how one of the things that Todd and I both noticed <laughs> as we're watching the movie? I, I have seen Return of the Jedi, I don't know how many times. Why have I never realized that the Emperor has a cane in the movie? See, I don't think you would have noticed it if I was if I didn't point it out originally. Yeah. Probably not. Because he comes out of the ship and uh, Todd's like, Is he does he have a cane? And I always thought he had a cane. But I <laughs> I've never watched the movies. I just know it from like clips and stuff, I've, so I have no, I mean, maybe I've noticed it in the past and I just like have no recollection of it. It's been a couple of years since I've seen uh, these, these old ones, but I mean, like, man, like I, in my memory, no memory of him. You know, you know what I think that is? Uh, Cause I was thinking, cause when we got to the iconic scene at the end, he doesn't have the cane. That's probably true. You don't really think of those small moments with him. Yeah. Mm. When you think of him in this movie, he's, he's not in the movie all that much. I mean, he's got his big, you know, like, iconic throne room scene at the end. But, I mean, it's not as if he's in, like, the whole thing constantly. You only get, like, maybe two scenes with him before the throne room, so. And, yeah, but, but sure as shit, he's sitting there with a cane. I'm like, what? This, like, 
It's a cool cane. He's, yeah, it's a cool cane. He's how old? And you guys don't think that he doesn't need a cane? <laughs> <laughs> he's an old man. He's an interesting character, and you'll learn more about this. We're, we're not going to record this because Todd and I have already relapsed through the prequel trilogy, but I'm, when I watch the prequels with you, because mm-hmm. if you know, we've said this before on the series, one of the, one of the main reasons we wanted my wife to join us is that she wanted to rewatch these movies before we go to Star Wars Celebration which is less than a month away at this point. So she still has some wanna, movies to watch. I want to feel like less of a poser. <laughs> it's not going to change the fact that I'm kind of a poser, but I want to feel like less of a but poser. But you're not a poser, though, because now you're starting to really get into I mean, you know, I don't want to ridicule you or anything or make you feel <laughs> defensive or anything like that, but you were crying at the end of this movie. Oh, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking it's sad. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> It's fucking sad. Yeah. But we'll... St- I mean, that's the end of the movie. We're not talking about the end of the movie. <laughs> we don't... I mean, you know, this is... I think people people know with Relapse, this is like full spoiler talk. Yeah. I mean, this movie's 30 years old. Yeah. <laughs> right. Almost 40 years right. old at this point. So, I mean, like, yeah, I mean... But I definitely... You, you may have enjoyed A New Hope. You may have enjoyed Empire Strikes yeah. Back, but... They've never elicited, like, emotion out of you in that way. No, that's why I think so. this one's my favorite. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, like, it could also have a lot to do with me being, like, more open to it now. Yeah, maybe. Because I, I was just like, eh, I'm just going to watch it. I'm going to go to this convention and, it's, like, I'm doing it for him. But now I'm like, you know what? Like, I want to know what the fuck is going on when I'm there, too. I want to accept it into my heart. <laughs> I'm accepting the Lord <laughs> Star Wars into my heart. But here's, here's a question for Anastasia. Do you but. think it would have elicited that same response if you haven't watched the first two? No, probably not. Okay. Oh, like lost. like if you hadn't watched A New Hope or Empire? No, like the the first two that we watched on Relapse. Yeah, Relapsed. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. No. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, you don't you don't jump into the end of a trilogy. No. <laughs> I also feel like I have um, like other feelings because of Solo as well, mm-hmm. because like the whole mm-hmm. like Lando thing. Yeah, that's fucking good. It's so fucking good. Like yeah. I love Lando, and I know that he. I mean, he was probably really popular back in the day, too, but I feel like I have, like, a newfound respect for him. Like, a different... I saw him differently than other people did. Uh, I can't wait until you watch the prequels. Because that, that, <laughs> that feeling right there is, like, the whole... The prequels' entire shit. Mm. Like, the prequels are all about, like, seeing the things that were set up. And, like, I mean, like, that's that's what's so cool about the prequels is you get to see Anakin become Vader. Oh, no. <laughs> it's sad, Oh, man. no. Oh, you're going to cry. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm not ready. And you get to see, like, you get to see Obi-Wan. Like, when we first pick up with episode one, The Phantom Menace, Obi-Wan's like a kid. Yeah. He- I think you'll find that the, I think you're going to come away from the prequels very, you're, you're going to enjoy them a lot for that reason. But I want to, talking about this movie specifically, though, I, I just wanted to talk about some of the things that I really like about There's it. There's a lot to unpack here. There is. There's a lot to unpack. Because you see, like... Um, Jabba's like Yabba. Yabba. You see Yabba's like headquarters. The or texture whatever? of Yabba. Jabba's Ew. palace. Yeah, yeah, the palace. It's the palace. And like that like that whole like charade that they made. Like they brought the droids yes. in as like an offering. Like that was a lot of shit just to like set up the, everything basically. Like that was insane and like um It was a all lot. just it and was all they, just a big rescue mission. Yeah, it was a huge yeah. And it was to get Han out. Yeah. And you meet the thing that the thing that's striking to me, and thinking about it even more as an adult, is like, how rare is it that you see like the ending of a trilogy, and they're still introducing like so many new concepts, and so many new aliens and stuff like mm-hmm. that, like the like the Rancor and stuff like that. Yeah. Like, oh, that was fucking sad too. The Rancor was sad, like when yeah. the the keeper or the trainer or whatever yeah. comes out and sees it. Oh, <laughs> so sad. He's crying over his old yeah, buddy. Yeah, he was. <laughs> there's shirtless a nice, and crying. There's, there's a nice little comic involving that scene. Is that is that an official comic or is it like a fan comic? I don't know. I think it's a fan comic because it's it's drawn in a very very cutesy way. Yeah, of I, like I think uh, I remember the, that. yeah the trainer sitting there with like it has like the Rancor with like a little blanket and shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh my it's god. It's adorable. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> But I think just that that whole scene, especially when I was a kid, like the Jabba's palace, Jabba's sail barge, all the different aliens and stuff. That that stuff really captured my imagination as a kid. That was the kind of thing where I was like, like the, they're all such like interesting designs and interesting characters and like. <laughs> From a female's perspective, Jabba's gross to anybody. He's very gross. But I'm like, 
I've been looked at the same way he was looking at, mm-hmm. like, his, like, slaves and stuff. Mm-hmm. And it, like, creeped me the fuck out. It's supposed to. Like, everything about him just creeped me the fuck out. And, like, yeah. the way Salacious was, like, in his, like, folds and shit. Like, he literally, like, lived in, like, a full... Oh. I just wanted to throw. I we were eating while we were watching it, and I literally <laughs> lost my appetite watching it. I really did. I was like, I can't fucking. It's gross. Dude. It's disgusting. Yeah. But that means that I mean that means that it's holding up really well. Like that yeah. means the prosthetics were fucking believable, and that means yeah. things like everything they were trying to do worked. I mean that's that's one of the things <laughs> that's gross. To me. Yeah. Well, it, it, there's 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 like three or four motherfuckers inside of that Java suit. Oh like, yeah. Like making it work, and they actually. Uh, I, I just know this from behind the scenes stuff, but they, like they they were in there like all day, just like sweaty, <laughs> just sweaty. and shit. And uh, I, I'm trying to remember what the exact specifics were. They, I think, to make it believable, because Jabba kind of smokes out of like a hookah. Mm-hmm. They actually like the caterpillar from yeah, Alice in Wonderland. One of them actually was smoking inside of the suit. Oh, so okay. imagine that being inside of this fucking huge latex mm-hmm. suit with like and four then, other sweaty dudes and smoking, and then somebody smoking inside mm-hmm. of it. That sounds like fucking hell. That, That's that, awful. I mean, and these are they long were committed days. to their craft. Yeah, these are long days of shooting. I mean, you're talking about they, they're probably in there for eight to ten hours at a time. Wow. You know, so, yeah. Props <laughs> yeah. to them. That's how they made Jabba work. But that's that's the thing is, like, especially in the 80s, when you look at that, he's a large, he's a larger than life, like, slug. Mm-hmm. You know, and he looks real. I mean, yeah. even still today, he you know. really nice. There's, um, in previous episodes of Relapse, you guys have sort of, like, uh, I think I think you and Todd both have have been like, ah, oh, the CG doesn't hold up, and you can tell what's CG and what's not. I think this one makes pretty minimal use. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, obviously there was the what's it called? The cantina? Is that the thing? Is that what it's called? What Jabba's palace? Yeah. Oh, is it just his palace? That was just like his entertainment? Yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah, okay. That was all well, for yeah. Him. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> yeah. Well, like his entertainment. I could tell the scene that was like added. Yeah. Like, this song oh, and the stuff. Oh, the size noodles. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Um, yeah. That's her name. <laughs> <laughs> so I could tell that that was added, but like yeah. it still was pretty seamless. Yeah. So I mean, it, it does, worked really well. You know, it, it works for what it is. Mm-hmm. It's mostly just... Oh, and, like, you love Boba Fett, but he was kind of yeah. sexy. Yeah. I kind of, like, was attracted to Boba Fett. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and when he was, like, flirting with the chicks, I was like, ooh. Yeah. And he does that little... <laughs> yeah, he does, yeah. like, the little chin thing. Yeah. I was like, okay, Boba, I see you, boy. <laughs> it's funny. Boba Fett, I mean, like, everybody fell in love with Boba Fett because he's just so mysterious and yeah, so badass. That's but what like, it is. But, yeah, but, but you don't really get that much from mm-hmm. him... In you either of these movies. Nope. Yeah, you don't really get the, the badassery of Boba Fett in this movie. He gets taken yeah. out by, by fucking blind Han Solo. <laughs> on accident. <Yeah. laughs> type of shit. Yeah, blind Han Solo like wrestles like a, a spear from like a skiff mm-hmm. guard. And he's like, oh, Bo- Boba Fett, right behind me? <laughs> and he just like hits his jetpack. <laughs> and that was it. And he and just rolls his ass into the Sarlacc pit. The great fucking Mandalorian warrior clone of Jango Fett. <laughs> If you think about it, Jango Fett, I mean, he sort of dies like a bitch, too. Not, n- it's, it's at least an curse. honorable death. I mean, he he, he died to a Jedi, so I don't know. I, yeah. I think his death's a little cooler. There's at least that. Part of me kind of wishes Boba got his revenge, but you know. It's the curse of the Fett. Live like a badass, <laughs> die like a bitch. <laughs> Live like a badass, die like a bitch. <laughs> But uh, but no, I I've just really I I love all that stuff. One one of the big things, the big points of contention for a lot of people. I want to know where do we fall on the Ewoks? I love them. I love except them. for the eyes. I think they're cute. I like their eyes. We already went over <laughs> this, but I like their eyes. Love it, the Ewoks. It reminds yeah, it reminds me of my pets, and they're just <laughs> cute, and they're like tiny, and like I know that that could be kind of controversial because yeah. like I can see why that's a problem. But to me, they're like animals. They're like cute little. Like teddy bears. Yeah, but they're also vicious. They're very vicious little bastards. <laughs> they're They'll vicious. They'll fuck you up. I like that. They fucked up the empire. That's it's like that's cats. <laughs> that's one of the things that I liked about them. I was talking about this while we were watching it. I love what the Ewoks represent. And that, that's what I think a lot of people miss with the Ewoks is they they're so hung up on like ah oh, these fucking teddy bears are in my Star Wars movie, and I'm just like that's stupid. Like the, what what's more important is that the Ewoks represent the the hubris of the of the emperor and like the him his overconfidence like luke says your overconfidence is your weakness and it's like yeah like straight up you're overconfident 
You didn't, you know, you didn't plan for the Ewoks. You didn't even know they were down there. And that was, and ultimately the Ewoks were the reason that mm-hmm. they were able to defeat the Empire. Yeah. And it makes it better that they're cute because that, like, that's why they didn't care about them. Yeah. Like if they did see them in passing, you're like, oh, it's just a cute skittish mm-hmm. thing. Like who cares? It's not a threat. But like when they're together, <laughs> they're fucking dangerous. Yeah. They single-handedly turned the tide. Yeah. It was amazing. It was awesome. I love that. I, yeah. And and I like the the sort of Ewok culture and welcoming them into their tribe and stuff like that. But oh, uh, one thing I don't like about Ewoks, mm-hmm. and I've never liked about Ewoks, is when people sexualize them in like female costumes when they go uh, to cosplays, and they're like, "I'm a sexy Ewok." <laughs> yeah. I fucking hate that. It makes me so uncomfortable. They have like the furry bra and shit. Oh, it makes yeah. me so uncomfortable. We saw a few cosplayers the on YouTube. The little teddy ears. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, no, don't sexualize these cute little things. I but, mean, I mean, everything gets sexualized eventually. It's always going to happen. Rule 34. It's like I'm sexy, wicked. <laughs> <laughs> it's always going to happen. It's bound to happen. Yeah. What did you think of the the emperor as a character? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's very interesting. Well, okay. So... I I was making a lot of memes in my head, and there's <laughs> there's this one where he's like looking down at Luke, like trying to convince him to be in the dark side, and like uh, Vader's behind him, and he like has his robe, and it like kind of goes in front of his face a little bit, and he's yeah. like lifting up his head, and it reminded me of like my cat Bubby when he like because <laughs> he comes up under the blanket, and he's just like <laughs> he just stares at me, and so I was like Bubby, <laughs> so like I couldn't take anything really seriously because I was. I was relating it to, like, other funny stuff in my brain. And you guys have seen it before, so you guys were making a lot of jokes. Yeah. There was, like, a lot of, like, Leia and Luke jokes. <laughs> like, oh, they're kissing or whatever, like. Um, well, they did kiss. It already happened. In the past. But, uh, and now that they, they, they realize that they're twins and they're related and stuff. But So there was a lot of fun to be had <laughs> during those, much like, serious. <laughs> much merriment. But I, I, as a, he's terrifying. Yeah. Like there's something that's like, he doesn't do anything until the end where he does like the lightning out of his fingers thing. But like, you know that he's terrifying because like Vader, you've seen him fight and he's still f- afraid of the emperor. So you're like, fuck, yeah. what can that dude do? Yeah. Like yeah. if Vader's afraid, like what the fuck can that dude do? Did you get to, I mean, that that's another cool thing in the prequels. Like you see his rise to power. Like the you, emperor's? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, you see. You yeah, because I was him. just kind of like, "Fuck him up, Vader! Like, what the fuck? Just yeah. kill him! You're right there. Well, he's both already. There. I mean, he's already a powerful Sith Lord. Yeah. And like, if you if you think about it, like, this, this is getting super nerdy, but he was the apprentice of somebody called Darth Plagueis, and Darth Plagueis was his whole life's mission was to find a way to cheat death. Mm. And so, it's there's sort of a question of like, did maybe he figure it out? Because oh. it's like. He was already super old in the prequels, mm. and now this takes place 30 years on from the prequels, and he's still alive, and doesn't even really look that much different. Mm. <laughs> so, anyway, there's a little bit of that in there. Yeah, he's 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 a really good villain. You'll you'll really come to once we watch the prequels. You'll you'll really come to like him because he uh, like to hate him, I guess, because because yeah. he. He is, I mean, episode one is called The Phantom Menace, and one of the things that that is referring to is him. Because mm-hmm. he starts off just as a total, like, innocuous senator, and he ends up taking over the fucking world. Mm-hmm. So, it's really spoilers, scary. Spoilers, bro. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Spoilers. Well, I, I, yeah, so I was terrified of him because everybody else was terrified of him. I was mm-hmm. like, I don't know what the fuck he can he do. He doesn't have to do much. He... He was also kind of creepy. <laughs> 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 like, I don't know, he just creeped me out. Just look at the look of him. No, like the way he's like, take it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> he like basically sets his lightsaber in his lap. <laughs> and yeah. He's just like, come get it, boy. Like, Go on. Go on. Go on. Take it. And I was like, oh, this he is has his eyes out. closed. And right. He's just like, strike me down. <laughs> oh, let the hate flow through you. And you know what? I think a lot of that is not. It is to get like a rise out of him. But I think it a is. lot of it is also because he doesn't really get to fuck people up very often. People mm-hmm. are already afraid of him. Yeah. So he's just like, fuck, give me a reason to well, like... Well, he's just sort of... I think he's also, like, he, he just kind of like... He, I mean, he has guards, he has mm-hmm. troopers, he has Vader. Yeah. If he needs to fuck anybody up, he'll just get his people to do that. Yeah. He's the puppet they, master. Yeah. Yeah, the thing is with, like, this is, like, expanded universe shit. Like, if you read, in, read into that stuff, like, Palpatine's just fucking bored. 
<laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, if you if you think about the level of espionage and the all of the shit and all the dealings and everything that he had to do and all the plates he had to spin to get to where he ends up in the original trilogy, like, yeah, you would be kind of bored. Once you, once you get to the top of the mountain, once you feel like you've won, it's kind of like, what now? You know? So. And then if he's cheated death, like, really, what yeah. now? Like, yeah. all he can do is die. So I think he was kind of welcoming it. That's why, I, that's why I'm like... I'm predicting. <laughs> He's not really dead. <laughs> Episode 9, he will be the ultimate villain behind it all. <laughs> he was pulling the strings. The ultimate puppet master behind all three trilogies. <laughs> oh, shit. Calling it now. Okay, keep your secrets. <laughs> we shall see. And I think that's who Matt Smith's playing. I think he's playing a young, rejuvenated Palpatine. Can we talk about the... Uh... Uh, something in the room. The elephant in the room. <laughs> what's the elephant in the room? Can we talk about what's a really big, what's a really big Star Wars creature? Can we talk about the Yaba in the room? Can we talk the about Yaba? the? Um, I fucking cried. You cried. I fucking cried. <laughs> and he, it's no. I mean, if you've seen it, you know why I cried. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I was avoiding this, but I I can't avoid Gotta it. Gotta talk longer. about it. Yeah. Gotta talk about okay, it. Okay, so. Luke and Vader. <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to cry. That's... Vader is so tragic. Mm -hmm. That's such a tragic story. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's so fucking tragic. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Power through. Power through. I'm trying. Um, <laughs> no, he, like... I don't know his backstory, um, but, like... Because I know that there's a reason why he is Darth Vader or whatever, whatever, yeah. whatever. I don't know that reason right now. I haven't seen that reason yet. But from my perspective it's like this dude who went bad for whatever reason oh no <laughs> y'all gotta forgive me i'm on my days okay. right now that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but um it's good radio no, he <laughs> he went bad for probably a good reason and then like his son finds him and it's just like i know you're still in there like i can feel you oh god what the <laughs> fuck this is so it's stupid a, i'm crying okay. over star wars it's, a, it's okay okay but, like, they're connected in a way where they can, like, feel each other. Yeah. And so he's like, I know you're still in there. Like, what the fuck? Like, why are you doing this? And, like, um, oh, god damn. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, Vader literally, like, sacrifices himself at yeah. the end. This is so stupid. I would not cry on any other day. It's not stupid. <laughs> this is so dumb. So he, like, sacrifices himself for Luke. Yeah. Um, and... Like, in return, like, redeems himself. Yeah. Because he couldn't have otherwise, because he's done, like, so many things for evil. Yeah, that's that, actually like, a point of contention for a lot of people, is, mm -hmm. like, you know, a lot of people are like, was that really enough to, like, redeem all I the horrible shit he's done? Especially if he's, like, regretting everything else. I think it is. Yeah. I really do. Like, if he's doing it, but he's doing it reluctantly, he's doing it because he has to, he's doing it because mm -hmm. he's afraid, I think that that's, I mean, I think it is redeemable, there... because I think he's just, like... There's a lot of conflict. I mean, even Luke says, he's like, I can feel the conflict within you mm -hmm. and shit. And he's, he, but what if the conflict was already there? Always. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Like, That's the thing. It's like, it was, it was always there. He was always conflicted. Yeah. And in fact, even in The Empire Strikes Back, what does he say? He's got Luke there and he's like, join me. We'll rule the galaxy as father and son. He already had in his head. Mm -hmm. He's like, fuck this guy. I want to yeah. I want to kill this like, guy and take him over, but him. I'm too scared by myself, mm -hmm. right? Let's let's father and son. Let's go take him over yeah. or whatever. And but that's because the he's Sith. basically like a machine. Yeah. Like the lightning just like fries him. Basically, yeah. there's nothing he can do. And like that was fucking sad. And then like he takes off his helmet, and that was fucking sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All of it was so fucking sad, and it's just like so tragic. The plays of the Imperial March, but <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and I was telling you that I was like, this is fucked up. I was like, this is fucked up because they played like the Imperial March, but it was like slowed down and like pretty. Yeah. And I was just like, oh no, like, they <laughs> fucked up. They fucked me up. <sighs> and then they have Luke. It's beautiful. Has a, and then Luke has a funeral party. Yeah, for he has him, like yeah, he's like himself. the only one on his yeah at his funeral. And then there's fireworks. Ever the whole galaxy. The whole celebrating. galaxy celebrating, and, and then at the very Luke end, Luke is mourning. And what do you see at the very end? Boob Luke looks off into the distance. Oh, shut <laughs> the fuck! Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> was that in the original, or was that something that was added? Yeah, it was, but it was the it was the actor. Oh, okay. It wasn't they changed Hayden the actor. Yeah. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Essentially, they made it look like 
they, you know, the, in the special edition, they they made it look like you know how he was before he turned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it was the looks... Force Ghost of Anakin Skywalker, not yes. the Force Ghost of Vader. Yeah. In yeah. the original cut, it's it's the actor that you see with the mask taken oh, off really? and all that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. really? <laughs> well, he doesn't look all scarred and oh, fucked okay. up. So. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, but it's. I like that it's the the Anakin. Yeah, because, I do too. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a good. It's like it's a good change. Basically, it's like all is forgiven. Like before Vader, you were like because even um, who is it that says it? Is it Yoda or, or Obi Wan that says basically like the person like like Anakin died. Yeah, like Obi-Wan Anakin, says Obi-Wan, that. yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Anakin's dead. Like, that's not your dad. Like, yeah. Vader is not your dad. He basically is dead. And so I like that when he became one with the Force or whatever, and he was, like, his illuminated being or whatever yeah. they say. Luminous uh, beings luminous, are we, <laughs> Luminous being that he was, like, pre Yeah. Because that would make Anakin. sense. He was Anakin. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. <sighs> this one got me, go. <laughs> this one got... I think that's why it's my favorite. It mm-hmm. provoked a lot of emotions. I wonder I like what's that. gonna end up being your ultimate favorite after you see them all. Hmm. And I wonder now this that this one's number one. Now that you get to see them like in context, I wonder what. Uh, Strike backs. I think we've only seen three. We've Maybe? only watched three with you. Three. You've only you have now completed the original trilogy. Okay, so for me it goes so. three, two, one. Okay, so, so you just backwards. Yeah. So Strikes return, back. Return of the Jedi. Oh yeah. Empire Strikes yeah. Back. Uh, A New Hope. Yes. Okay. That's where I'm. I'd be curious to so know far. your ranking. <laughs> when, when it's all said and done, how you'll like everything. It's good. I'm getting, like, I started it because I wanted to, like, know more about, like, I don't know who Salacious B. Crumb was. You know yeah. what I mean? Oh, f- speaking of what, was he, like, a puppet? Yeah. Oh, he was just a puppet? Mm-hmm. I always won- I was just wondering. Like, yeah, he's he a puppet. He clearly wasn't CGI. No, he, he is. Clearly nobody could fit in that suit. So he's he's like- a puppet. They, so Lucas um, Lucasfilm had a really good relationship with... Uh, so a lot of like directors back in the 70s and 80s kind of had almost like a little like click. Mm-hmm. So he's really good friends with like Steven Spielberg. That's why mm. they ended up making Indiana Jones together. Okay. And then he was also like a lot of the puppets come from like Jim Henson mm. and stuff like that. Okay. So interesting. Yeah. So um, but yeah, Salacious B. Crumb. Yeah, he was definitely a puppet. A lot of those, a lot of those, almost all of them that you saw in the background there were all wearing prosthetics or, mm-hmm. or, or they were puppets yeah. or whatever. That's the cool thing about Star Wars. Mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of stuff like that and, mm-hmm. like, monsters and stuff. And they literally just have species upon species upon species yeah. that are all, like, really unique and cool. Yeah, you can't So, like, I kept seeing whatever else. species Greedo is. I saw a lot a of... a Rodian. A Rodian. I've seen a lot of Rodians, and I'm like, that's not Greedo. Like, who is that? It's just mm-hmm. That's just a species that exists there. And that's really interesting. Oh, that's one me. complaint I have about the sequel trilogy. I'm like, where are my fucking Rodians? Where are my Duros? Where are my where are my classic are Star the, Wars? The new the ones. New ones. Oh yeah. I don't. I'm not seeing a lot of them. No, you're you, right. Where you, are they? Not, you never will. <laughs> you're right. You never fucking will. That's terrible. You know that's what? There's terrible. a rumor that uh, the Duros that appears in the Battlefront Two campaign is actually a character in Episode Nine. So that'd be interesting. I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be interesting. I'm glad you're watching these. Me too. I'm getting excited. Now mm. that you're you're welcomed into the fold. <laughs> Ew. With open I, arms. I don't want to be in the fold. Just like you're my I'm little just, salacious <laughs> beacon, no. and I'm your oh, job. No. I hate this. <laughs> <laughs> You know the guy who does the voice, the little well, the the voice, the laugh of salacious beacon. Crumb. He's he's gonna be at Star Wars Celebration. Oh, is he? Yeah. Mark That's Dodson. Terrifying. Sounds like Ripper Roo from Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> <laughs> Todd, what uh, what stuck out to you in this in this you know besides repeat, the cane? <laughs> besides the cane, what uh, what mm. stuck out to you in this relapsed viewing of Return of the Jedi? Honestly, not a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, we're both familiar with the film. That's that's my thing. Like, I was just kind of paying attention to like, you know what? Actually, I was. Th- I was thinking you said it as well as like there's a lot of parallels to that uh, scene that that's the ending scene with the emperor to totally. the Snoke scene. Totally. Yeah. I mean he he straight up has the lightsaber on the even the same side of him. Yeah. That Snoke has Rey's lightsaber in uh in the Last Jedi. It's funny when you and you know what's funny is like I didn't even piece this together but like the words the Last Jedi are even said. Yep. Like when Yoda's dying there, he's like, he's like, when I die, you will be the last Jedi, and I'm like, oh fuck, that's where they get the title from. 
I, I don't know why, but I also drew another parallel. And I don't, this might just be me, like, being crazy. Uh-huh. I don't know why the fuck, but, like, the whole scene with, like, Leia and uh, Wicket and all that. Yeah. Really, I don't know, and the way that he walks ended up helping out really reminded me very heavily of, like, the shit that happened. Just in a more grand scheme with the uh, the Gungans. Yeah. Yeah, In a definitely. weird way. Yeah. A little, yeah, definitely a little bit. I mean, like, the, the Gungans in, in, this is a prequel trilogy moment that Todd's referring to. Uh, the Gungans are Jar Jar's race. Mm-hmm. And and it is sort of like that where it's like you they're they're sort of accepted and and they they take you know play a major role in the, yeah. in the war and stuff like that. I could see that. I could definitely see that. Well, it's like you know that's something when you uh, like I, I've watched all of the behind the scenes documentaries that they include with these movies, and I highly recommend them to people. It's they're super interesting and stuff. But when George was making the you know the prequel trilogy. He's sitting there, there's a quote from George where he's talking about, like, all the callbacks to, like, like specific callbacks that he includes in the movies that reference the other movies. It's like poetry. They rhyme. It's like, that's what, that's what he says about them. He's like, every stanza is the same as the last. And he's just talking about, talking about the, the similarities and the comparisons that you can yeah. draw. So that, that stuff is definitely intentional. I mean, this... This is a very George Lucas is a very visionary person, and Star Wars is a very deliberate franchise. So, the, these movies are very deliberate. I love them. I love Star Wars so much. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you liked it. I'm so glad it moved you to tears. <laughs> well, thank you for showing me. I wouldn't have done this otherwise. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, but but I think uh, <laughs> when you're. When you're like leaving a family gathering, you yeah. say bye like bye. four times, and you're like, "Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad we came here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad we did this." Anyway, I think that's that's pretty much gonna do it. Unless you guys wanted to add anything last minute, anything else you can think of about Return of the Jedi? I just want to clarify that I'm, that I ain't no punk. You punk ass bitch. I ain't no punk. No, it's, look, it's an emotional scene. I ain't no punk. It's emotional shit. It's emotional you're gonna, as fuck. You're gonna cry some more. I tell you that much. <laughs> you're gonna cry some more. Uh, I still I when did you get choked up? Did either of you get choked up? I need to know this. I did. I, I always do when I see that ending stuff. Yeah. It's sad, man. It's, I, I it's mean, even, I don't like I don't tear up, but it, it gets me. Okay, okay. It's even. I mean, like like I said, once you know the full story and you get the full context, stuff is even sadder. Like if mm-hmm. anything, there's yeah. and it, it's like especially being as like you know I know watching, he has like a love interest, but I don't know much. Oh about yeah, it. well I mean he has kids. Yeah, right? he has kids, right? So, he has to. Um, yeah, so yeah, I mean, and then like the Clone Wars too. Like that series adds a lot of context to it too, where like little innocuous things that happen kind of kind of feel heavier because of the things that you've seen. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think. I, you're really, really gonna like the prequels. I think I'm gonna be curious to know. I, I can't even watch the last fight between Obi Wan and Anakin. That fucks me up, man. Is that the lava scene? Mm. Yeah, <laughs> fucks me up, man. I'm ready it's for so that. It's so sad. I'm ready for that. I you're gonna remember. cry. Oh shit. You're gonna cry. Oh shit. It's sad because they're brothers, man. Wait, anyway. who? Obi Wan and Anakin. Oh, they're brothers. Not literally brothers, but uh, I mean they. I mean they're they're with Obi Wan. Literally, I feel like I can watch it knowing that. It, how it ended now <laughs> I'm yeah. like oh it's a good ending it's okay like this is just a speed bump like they're oh, living in the, the as luminous oh, beings together. oh my darling you'll you'll soon come <laughs> to learn <laughs> anyway I think that's gonna do it for us on this episode of Relapse thanks for listening guys we'll catch you next time I think Todd and I are next going to tackle The Force Awakens right yep cool so we'll catch you for that thanks for listening guys bye 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 see ya Hey there, thanks for checking out another fantastic Nerd Bourbon video. If you like what you saw and you want to see more, be sure to go ahead and subscribe, leave us a like, drop us a nice comment, or I guess a, a mean one if that's if that's your prerogative. But uh, until next time, get dunked on.